Yeah. We'll call the meeting to order at six o'clock. First on the agenda, are there any changes or additions, Eric? Yes, there are. If you would please delete uh, number five on our new business, the approved new hire for administrative assistant, as we are still in the process for that. We don't need them right where you like where we are. Okay. All right. Next, approve the minutes. The minutes of April 4th, 2022. Thank you, Mr. Second. A motion by Brian and a second by Judy. Any further discussion on these minutes? Bob, I have one thing on those minutes. Um, under, okay. on page two, under number one, discussion of the Oxbow Music Festival. Everything's good there. I just, we did spend um, quite a few minutes anyways, talking about uh, uh, the appropriateness of, a local cannabis business sponsoring the event. And I'd just like to have it reflected in the minutes that the board did discuss whether a cannabis cannabis company should be uh, sponsoring the event. That's a good call. Thank you. Yeah, I that was one of my comments too. And um and I thought I also said that we talked about um we had questions regarding the qualifications of bartenders and access. You're broken up, Jess. We lost you. The only part we heard was qualifications about bartenders. We lost you after that. Like stickers. Um, so basically, what Don's saying. Oh, sorry. Um, I. We're talking um, about not getting getting stuck. Sorry, I'm gonna be like in a stable spot in a minute. Um, can you hear me now? No, not clearly. About every other word. Can anyone understand her? Yeah, yeah I can't either, Bob. Okay, Don. She said she's going to be someplace with a better signal here shortly. Yeah. She says, sorry, I'll be in a good spot in 10 minutes. Okay, you want to hold off on approving these minutes? She said something. Some. She said something. Anything we need a decision at this point if you don't have her approval, we'll present. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Right. I, the we, we can adjust the, the, the minutes to reflect more of that, that detail. Okay. The, I think I was just talking about the association of the, the fact that it's a tobacco free park and it's a, oh, we lost a screen. company sponsor of sorts. Of, uh, right. Yeah, I remember that. Make a motion we get a better audio visual system for Zoom. I'll second that. <laughs> <laughs> you heard me well. <clears throat> so any any further comments on the minutes? All in no. favor say aye. 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 Uh, Jess, can you hear me now? Uh, you um can you hear me you better now okay um i put in the chat um my comment okay okay so are you in favor of passing the minutes jess um that agrees with Don. 
about what we talked about regarding the Oxbow, um, the Oxbow yeah. Fest? Yes. Eric's got it. He's going to add that portion to the minutes. Okay, is there anyone opposed? The minutes are passed. <clears throat> minutes for April 12th, 2022. So moved. I have a motion by Judy. Second. And a second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on these minutes? On both of them. Okay. Somebody made a motion. No second. Yeah. No seconds. I don't know if that has to be. Is it? I don't know the procedure. I asked that. that question too when I proofread them, and I was told that Robert's rules of order do not say that you have to have a second. But I don't know anything about it other than that. Okay. That that's what I was told. I just know that I'm pretty sure about them. There was. They did have seconds. But. Yeah, they did. They did. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. yeah. We're hoping the standardizer, and that's the end of the year. Okay. Jess, did you have a comment on the second minutes? Uh, and everyone's gone. <laughs> Boy. Yeah, it's time to call for court, I can tell you that. <laughs> Any further discussion on these uh, minutes? I have comments on the second minutes. I, I, I was, I was, uh, can you hear, <laughs> did you hear that? Jess, if you can hear me, mute yourself on there, but watch the video and then call my cell phone. Okay, all in favor in passing these minutes, say aye. 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 Don? Aye. Any opposed? The minutes are passed for, oh. Yeah. Okay. Next is community concerns. Do we have community concerns tonight? Yes, I have. Just mute, your, uh, mute yourself on the screen, please. She's, she's here. Yeah, you're all set, Jess. Just the way you are. Okay. I can't hear anything going on in the meeting. Yeah, we have you now very clear. We hear you. Oh, okay. And um, I just asked if there's any community concerns. I, I can't hear the meeting with like this, though. Right. Well, I think you. Sorry. I, I yeah. Yes. Okay, but I can't hear the, I, I don't, I have the volume down on my phone. I mean, on my computer, so I can't hear the meeting. That's right, you're searching me for a microphone. We put it right, we put you right on the table near me. <laughs> okay. Is that better? Uh, yeah. Okay. Is there any community concerns? Ruth and Pat. Do you introduce yourselves, please? Um, I'm Ruth Brown. I'm Pat Nicholson. And you might I'm want to Matt. use the microphone behind you. Oh, okay. it's okay. It's okay, it's okay yeah. Okay. We got to pick her up. Okay. Um, uh, we're residents on uh, Park Street here in town. And just a little backstory um, uh, the sidewalk in front of our house, uh, our houses on the, it's considered the south side of Park Street. Uh, were taken up last summer um, and uh, not replaced. The grass was put in, dirt grass was put in. Um, we've come to several meetings uh, voicing our concern that we would like the sidewalk replaced. Um, we uh, received a letter from the town uh, beginning of April to each resident along uh, Park Street and basically that the, that each resident a property has to um uh offer a complete an easement deed for the property uh one of the one of the folks on the, the street um 
Yeah, because last name Christopher is his first name. Uh, Dr. Kylie in his old house uh, had not received a letter. So, just is there a way to double check that everybody um, on the street has received the letter? We, we bought the house this summer, so we might. It was not on the tax roll. No, well, we don't, the, the tax masters only went by by the yeah. And um, um, at the accounting office would be here, but it's tax day today, so she was busy. Um, but she uh, has, has received a letter and replied to it. Um, there were a couple other properties that we just wanted to make sure um, had gotten the letter. The LLC? Yes. Yes. I, I received a response from them. Okay. It was very generic. And there's one empty house uh, right next door to my house at 236 that is, um, I don't know, it was, it's been empty for uh, several years now, just to make sure that that house um, has received a letter. Uh, there's nobody living there right now, but the property owner has received a letter. Because uh, you had said, stated that you needed to hear from everybody by right. April 20th. Right. So we just want to make sure that yeah. I had with my loan officer and she never heard such a thing and they're still researching it. Never heard such a car. But you told what? About the easement thing. So we, the, the current. Where you're saying that it's going to cost two hundred fifty dollars for transfer tax, and you had a mortgage on the property, some lenders would require a partial release that would be an additional fifty, and then you warn, you caution that there might have to be a new appraisal, full appraisal on the property. Well, that was the information I received from our uh, right. attorney's office. So I I talked to hold on. <clears throat> I talked to uh, John Kaplan, so I'd like to make this point. That if you went for a grant from the state, there's the opportunity for us, the homeowners, to gift you what's missing with the sidewalking. And the reason I measure from the center line over and the 25 feet and Exactly where the sidewalk would start. So it would be a matter of gifting the town five feet. And um, John Kaplan said he doesn't, he's giving chance to go to the sidewalk to the grant. And he said that he doesn't see any reason why you guys are doing this because we had a sidewalk. He didn't get public notice. I forget what town it is. They sued over this, over sidewalks being renewed. St. Albans had the same situation. They renewed sidewalks without notifying people. And the town got angry. So the point is that we, when we bought our house, it was a sidewalk. And now there isn't. And now we have to get into, potentially get an appraisal. And that's, that's just totally unreasonable. And if we're offering to gift you five feet, which I'm sure everybody would be willing to do, it would solve. Do you want to comment on any of that, Eric? You know the most about it. The town cannot put sidewalks or roads or anything of the kind without an easement. Other people's land without legally having an easement transferred to us. And, and that never had it, right? But we can gift you. That the old sidewalk that was there never had an easement. That's correct. That's the problem. 30 years. Well, they're, the state's seeing it a different way. He said, if the sidewalk was there and it was maintained for 30 years and you took it away, putting it back in, and if we gifted you the five feet that you need to put it in, that would solve it. Like, we don't have to go through this big written law. You can't gift us the easement. I'm sorry. Well, can. You cannot give us the easement. It has to be a deeded easement. It has to be processed in order for us to legally put anything on that land. Okay, so if you've got a grant, clearly in the grant it says that the homeowner has a right on an easement to request reimbursement for the property. 
This is if you do a grant, that we have the right, or we can waive being reimbursed for the right to put the sidewalk in and gift it to the town. I sent you the information and I went over this. I'm only acting on the advice for council. That's all I can right. say. Well, there's, so this is the deal. And I just, I made this in the middle. She's off my phone, I think she's ready to. Okay. I made this in the middle. It's off. She's hung up. In the most polite manner. We have been at this since July. I went back and read every available minute that was online. And there was nowhere it was ever discussed that Park Street was going to be removed to the sidewalk, to let alone the public notice. I read all the minutes. So I don't want to argue. I'm asking you respectfully to please put the sidewalk back in. And if you're going to say no and we're going to go through all this, then I'm just going to file with the federal government, which I don't want to do. What's the status of that right now? Everyone has to agree, isn't that correct? Correct. You that. don't have to agree if you honor the ADA. But we're going by our legal counsel. Okay, ask? that's what we have to do. We can't go by somebody else's yeah, did you idea. Ask the ADA? I mean, I didn't bring in the Department of Transportation. I, I don't have a problem doing that at this point. Well, that's a. See, under the ADA, you're supposed to provide a safe walking area which is not present on our side of the street. There is no reasonable way to cross the street in the snow. There isn't. There just isn't. And if I walk from my driveway directly across the street, the incline is too steep and it's always covered with snow, which makes it dangerous. And I provided you a letter with why it wouldn't work from a physical therapist. I've done everything I know how to do. And, you know, you're saying it's your legal thing. I'm going to get a lawyer too. This is going to court more than once we can. I've researched it. It could be that it does. Yeah, I think. Who, who is Don Kaplan? Don Kaplan is V Trans. But V Trans isn't in charge of a town sidewalk. They're in charge of sidewalks. If you want money, for a sidewalk, you go to VTrans. Well, who, who is he in VTrans? Is he a lawyer for VTrans? What does no, he do? He's the one. If you have questions about sidewalks, if you have questions about ADA accommodation, if you want a sidewalk for, say, schools, like, for instance, children on our side of the street don't have a safe way to get to school using the middle school or the high school. So there was a lot of questions in there, and when Jess was here, several times she asked about grants, and so I researched the grants. I provided the grants. If you apply for a grant, which would be a small grant for our street, you would have approval by August, and money would be there for the next. If you got the grant, that's right. an if. Well, the, well, there's a questionnaire that you fill out that's saying, is it a dangerous road? And it goes through the whole thing. Is there elderly on the side of the street? And you're allotted so many points for each criteria that you're asking for. Which our street needs. Our side of the street needs it. Uh, I would think we ought to get that guy to come in here because I can't believe that the state of Vermont's going around telling us that we have to put a sidewalk in. They're not saying you have to. Well, you just said that the ADA says we, we have to put a sidewalk Well, in. no, the ADA is you have to provide a safe safe walkway for people on a dangerous street and part of the street. And you know if we, if we build sidewalks, we have to build them to ADA. Right. But I mean, there's towns around us that have no sidewalks at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, right. I can't make, think they're going to make us do that. So I think we have to make sure that well, we I, get the legal things. Right. And like I said, maybe you have the right to give it to us, but I don't think you'd have to go to a lawyer to do that. Because we have to have a deed, what it sounds like. Maybe, maybe with a grant, we don't, but I'd like to have somebody. Well, I, I think that, you know, I mean, from my viewpoint, I bought my house and it had a sidewalk. You failed to give written notice. Give anybody on the opportunity of our side of the street to come and talk to you about it. Well, so we I came very respectfully, came very respectfully. I gave you a letter from my physical therapist. I've been very reasonable about this. And just because the sidewalk is gone doesn't mean. Well, the sidewalks were there were pretty rough and they were hard to keep up. And, <coughs> uh, 
Yeah, they couldn't use a machine on it anymore. Yeah. So we it was so it, rough. We I mean, I think we've been over the um, what what actually happened um, that resulted in this portion of sidewalk um, being lost. And I think right now we're at a place where we're trying to figure out um, whether the town can afford like it's not even I don't even necessarily think it's weather, but it's when the town can afford to replace it. Um, and it sounds like where we're at right now is that we're getting the right of ways from all of the concerned um, landowners, correct? And um, we're in a process of um, figuring out how we're going to afford to to add more sidewalks and to maintain sidewalks in Morristown. Um, I, I don't know about the, the grant. Um, I don't know where um, maybe Eric can weigh in on that in terms of where we stand. Um, but I think we've, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. It sounds, it, I feel like the select board we have, we have entertained, the, certainly entertained the idea of adding this sidewalk back to the, the roster of sidewalks in Morristown uh, or Morrisville in the village. Um, but, you know, there's so many there's so many sidewalks that are in really bad shape um, that that are also on the list, and you know we can't fund everything all at once. So, I mean, from my perspective, we're we're working on it, um, but I I don't know where where we stand um, on the grant money, um, and maybe Eric could weigh in on that, and you know the rest of the board can speak to my my take on this. Well, it's not it's not just money. It's not really money at all. It's about we have to get the easement. If there's one person on that side that doesn't want to grant an easement, it's not going to happen. Period. It has to happen. Well, that we have Every to, person that we has have to, to agree. So it's not just about money. Right. And so that's where the disagreement come in. And just, just so you know, we followed it exactly as it happened. And Route 12 are dangerous. And when you talk about side streets, I, I appreciate that there's crumbling sidewalks. Believe me, I wish the whole town could have a sidewalk. But when you say all the other people need it, the two streets that are the busiest, that are the most dangerous, is Route 12 and Park Street. And they should have your priority. Not well, I, I believe, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I believe that the Route 12 sidewalk is um, towards the top of our list um, to, to repair. And do they have an easement? Well, it's, they already, it's right already, already a sidewalk. Do That's, they have an easement for the sidewalk? Or so are they like us? They, they, there. they don't need it. They have, they're within the right of way. Where the sidewalk is now is within the right of way. So we don't need an easement. The only reason we need an easement on Park Street is because it's not within the right of way. So it's 25 feet from the middle of Route 12. Up Route 12 it is, yeah. Right at the edge of Route 12, all the way through there. There's places there's no sidewalk. So then the other question was when I looked it up is, do you have it in writing what you decided the right of way was? The right of way is. Each town had, had decided when I researched it, each town had decided what the right of way was. It could be that when the town put in the sidewalk originally, the sidewalk, the right of way was more than 25 feet from the center line. Isn't that what it is, Eric? Twenty-five foot from the center of the road. It is. That's, the That's by statute. The roads are three rod wide. Three rod. And measure, measure from that is twenty-five to sixty feet either side of the side of the road. They're all the double roads. And that state statute. Yeah, I guess. I mean, we're 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 doing what we have to do. We reached out with letters to everybody. You know, well, hopefully everybody will grant it. Hopefully everyone will grant the easement. I just have a question about a federal grant. You can do a lot of sidewalks. Our hope is that we get some money for sidewalks. And we're if we do, we're going to spend I mean, a whole I, lot of it on sidewalks. I Eric, even like the checklist to check off to apply for a grant, what yeah. constituted a state grant, what constituted a, a small project, what constituted a long project, you know, a large project. That's a big answer. That's, that's, that's huh? a very complicated answer. It's not something you can be. 
the initial signage. You don't have to have like all of your um, cost assessments and all that in your plan. I know we're currently taking a survey of all the sidewalks that we need to have replaced and the ones we need to work on and you know we're trying to Kevin's been working on that for a while. Yeah, but there's a lot of money, there's a lot of money out there for sidewalks. Yeah, and we hopefully we're gonna be able to find some of it. So I just had a question about the, the timing. So if on Wednesday uh, the twentieth, um, you haven't heard from everybody on our street, um uh just yay or nay or uh yay. Um, what is there uh, an appeal process? If say one person said no, is there a way to appeal that or make sure we have all the information? I would hope so. Or the bank hasn't applied. I mean, I called when I got the letter, and and I emailed her today, and I even went over to the bank so they could scan it and email it to her, and I read her a description of what happened. And today I wrote to her, and she said we're researching it. And when I first told her what happened, she just said, "I we don't want to know." She just couldn't believe it because it was a sidewalk there. And the owner, the new owner, said, "Told me to tell them what the appraiser said." And at one point, it was a sidewalk. Oh, that was the the they bought the house. The sidewalk was there, and then when they came back for the final walkthrough. There was no sidewalk, and they were very surprised <laughs> by mm -hmm. that. Um, so I just wanted uh, uh, to see with the um, uh, the letters from the folks on the street uh, after the after Wednesday. Will we be notified? That what happens after that? Do you know what the process works, Eric? What's going to happen? What the letter stated was is I was looking for a unified voice that folks on the street were going to mm -hmm. grant us an easement. Understanding, and the letter explained, yeah. that the, the cost for obtaining that easement was on the homeowners, the town would not pay any of those fees. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> Today, I received two responses by email. One confirmed that they would be willing to grant the yeah, easement and cover that. The other one was very generic and just saying that they understood the town would need an easement across their property to put on the sidewalk. They didn't say they would agree to pay for it, they didn't say they would agree to grant it. So we need a better answer from them. I, I didn't get any letters returned of the eight we mailed out for 11 properties, eight, eight owners of the property. So I will confirm, I didn't send it with uh, Return receipt request. Return receipt request. And send them certified. So uh, I will do some some background to make sure that everyone has received the letter. But the letter simply the date in there was simply to encourage folks to get right back as soon as possible, so we can keep this moving forward. The April twentieth, we want to drop that date. There's no process for this. We're working outside of the process as far as an appeal goes. This is this is I don't know if I'm territory or what it is, but. I, I cannot apply for grant money unless my board votes to put the sidewalk in. That's the directive I have to follow. If the board votes to put it in, then I can use that sidewalk project, but I still need to get the easements. There's a no, there's no sense <coughs> going any further with the easements. Let, let him finish. I'm sorry. Until we get all of the easements in place. Once they're in place, then we can move forward. And, and all I was looking for is a verbal from the the property owners say yes we will grant you the easement and i would go back to the board for approval of the project even after approval of a project i have to wait for all the easements to come in once they are completely in and that what i was trying to do is save people from spending money they didn't need to one person refused but i didn't want the others all all the other property owners to spend money for not so i, I Try to think the process through as best I could with this letter, but this has become such a process now that I I don't I don't know what the next step is if we don't continue to follow this one. So this is I have a question. So from what I've read, and I can provide you with it, and then I can highlight it and email it to somebody. If if you apply for a special grant and you do have the right to get to the five feet. That, that is true. I'm not making this up. 
It's, it's specifically in the guideline. And so that doesn't help us with easements, though. So. It feels like a catch 22. If you use a federal grant, this is the deal. If the rule is, according to Don Kaplan, and I've read it, if you use grant money, you have to come to us because now there's no sidewalk. The law could have been avoided, but it's needed at this point. You come to us and we have the right for reimbursement. If we say to you, look, we don't want reimbursement, we'll just give you the five feet and it's okay. That's the way it works. It's not really what your attorney is saying, but I'm talking in regard to grant money. So I'm what, what I'm so what, putting on that because I'm ready. What I'm hearing Eric say is, if I can remember it now, is that we have to get the easements. We have to get all the permissions. Yes, everyone's going to grant the easement. Then we can go step forward with getting a grant. So we, so we can't go if we we can't do the grant until we get the easements. Right. That's my understanding. That's what I is keep this saying. My understanding that. here. That's correct. It keeps bouncing back. Yeah. But then, if you got the grant, then we can grant you the money and it doesn't cost all. That is not true. That I'm, like, I'm just going to cut this off. We're in community concerns. It's not an agenda item. We're 20 minutes in this conversation. I know. So yeah. My point is this: I was on the phone with Jim Barlow, our municipal law attorney, this week. We were speaking about Court Street because we were looking at both sidewalks for replacement as well. And he reiterated to me, if the sidewalk is in your right of way, you do not need an easement to put the sidewalk repair it back in. If it is outside of your highway right of way, you have to obtain an easement. We have to obtain an easement. Whether it's a Why grant or anybody owners. just pays for it, you I'm, still got to get an easement. Doesn't matter where the, the money comes from. Board, because I don't want them spending money obtaining an easement Okay. If one person says no, I'm not doing it because they will spend their money for mine. Okay. So let, let me follow through with this, but I, I I cannot sit here and continue to listen to false information. Yeah. And I think that, I think Pat knows exactly what you're saying is true, but I'm telling you, we it cannot, true. We Honestly, cannot I just I can't understand. I cannot continue forward outside of the direction of our attorney. I am not going to do that. that. And the, the attorney is clearly stated that we have to have the agency. So maybe we just need to pay another attorney and see what that other attorney says in this real estate too. It is. So I'm waiting um, I, for, I'm just waiting I, for the feds to let me get back to me. So that's where we are. Go ahead, Jess. Um, I, I just, I, I worry that um, this is seems to be going down a road of um, contentiousness. And I, I can understand the frustration on the part of the residents of Park Street, um, because like I, I think everyone would agree, it is a, certainly a very arduous bureaucratic process. Um, my one question, um, so it seems very clear to me that we have to get the easements before we can move forward. We're in the process of, of um, getting the easements. Is there any way um, legally that the residents of Park Street, like um, that um, can, can expedite that process. Is there another way of, of obtaining the the easements without, um, you know, waiting on the letters? Can can a petition go around door to door? Like, is there is there another way that um, that we can get there to the you know to the unanimous to the like what um, Eric is calling the unified voice? Part of the part of the problem I see is that several of the properties are there's nobody there. There's an empty house next door to us. There's the electric department at the end. There's an empty property. There's a school, the Mosaic School, that um, doesn't really want to be involved. Doesn't seem to really want to be involved. Did you go in there at the school? Right. Well, I mean, I, I guess what I'm saying. I guess my question is also an open question, and maybe it, it's going to involve more research. But is there a way that you you two can? Um, go to your neighbors and ask them for um, help getting the easements. You know, if is, you know, the town, you know, the towns put out a letter. Um, a couple have come back. It sounds like, you know, that process isn't going um, smoothly in terms of getting the the um, consent that you need. So, is there a way that, I mean, you know, I'm sorry to say to like put the put it on you, but maybe like if it feels like you're expediting the process, that might feel better. 
Um, it might help. I don't, <laughs> Even I don't know, I don't, I'm, I'm also asking, I don't know, Eric, if it's legal, um, you know, and, and what that um, what that consent would look like if there's a form that um, that can go around to the neighborhood or, you know, I, I'm just. This is what is, does this really about the neighborhood coming together. Okay, we can work on that. To, to, <laughs> to assure that, I mean, really, the assurances we're trying to seek right now and trying to help gather is the assurance that everyone is willing to put the money forth to do this easement process. It's really not even about the, the town doing anything at this point. I, I just looking to get confirmation so everybody there is comfortable that they can start the process for uh, getting the easement document ready and paying the money out, knowing that all participants are going to, uh, all the property owners are going to participate. And even House of Tempty is owned by somebody. Right. So, um, what does that consent look like? Is it, um, is it a, is it a form? Is it like, is there like certain language? Is there a form that, you know, you. Not even that official Jess. It's, it's nothing official. Uh, this was, a, this is a very informal unofficial process. There is no standard to follow here. I am I'm following the board's guidance, which said, if we can get the easements, then we'll, you know, if we get the confirmation that all residents are going to give an easement, then the board would then vote whether or not do we put the sidewalk in. Once that vote is achieved, then I wait for the for the uh, easements to come in. Once I have all the easements to the properties, then we can start the process for either applying for grant money or just doing it with our budgeted money for sidewalks. Right, yeah, I, I, the I, the I would just recommend that if Ruth is going to be doing this, Ruth and Pat, that they have it in writing or they tell the people to write to Eric so it is in writing. It's not just a verbal, yes, yeah, I'm, I'm going yeah, to do that. Yeah, yeah. And, and we will, we, I'd be happy to, to continue to to catch people at their home. Right. That's just a, I just several know. properties that I just want to make sure that they got a lot of there. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, I see that. Okay. Right, but we still have to get the, the easement. I'm going to provide know. Ruth with a list of the names and addresses of the folks that we have the letters to. Yeah, that would be that. That would be helpful. Did that make sense to you? Yeah, yeah, okay. it does. So, what does it say? We can do with that to you guys. Right. Yeah, as far as the grant goes, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, I, I spend hours and hours reading the documents that you sent me. I'm not going to do it over Well, the whole point is very short, and it's from John Kaplan, who. But it's well, John Kaplan does not work for the town of Lawrence County, he's not our attorney. Okay. I'm not interested in Mr. Kaplan's opinion. Okay. All right. Okay. Hopefully, we can get somewhere with this. Hopefully, okay. hopefully, we can get resolution from all the people that own it, and then we'll be able to go forward. Is there any other community concerns tonight? All right. Is there liquor control tonight? Doesn't look like it. Yeah, there is. That's why I said that. Is that the one? Yep. The Oxbow. Yeah. Do I hear motion to go into liquor control? Motion by Brian. Is this it? That is yeah. that is for the event of the Oxbow you discussed last week. Yeah. Okay. So we, we needed to get through one thing. One thing at a time. Yeah, so this is the oh, other okay. second part of that, yeah, approving yeah. it. Is there a second to go into liquor second. control? Second by duty. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Donna, yes? Aye. Oh, sorry. Okay. We are now in liquor control. So we have one request here. I think one approve it. What's the uh, I'm cons what's the difference from what we did last last time? We didn't approve the liquor part of it. We just approved the event the use of the Oxbow for okay. that. Because you have an agenda item to, to discuss the event sponsor. Uh-huh. Yeah. We didn't because the liquor control board convenes prior to the agenda item. So uh, okay. We did the agenda item last meeting to do this this week. Okay. Tom told us he's gonna come back for that. Yes. Okay. okay. Is the so um, I had a motion? Is our, our noise ordinance um, till 11 p.m.? It's 10 o'clock. It's 10, but it does say 11 on here. We have, we have ran, 
ran we past the, or this specific okay. event. Yeah. We, I asked that question last time. Yeah. I had a motion by Brian. Yes. And a second. Yes. Okay, a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion on approving this? All in favor say aye. Aye. Don? Aye. Aye. Jess? Aye. Thumbs up. Motion is approved. 5 0. Is there a motion to come out? I make a motion to come out. Second. Motion by Brian, second by Judy. Um, um, all in favor say aye. 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 And aye. All right, we're now back in regular select board meeting. New business, discuss Jersey Heights stormwater project. All right. Um, can that I? That would be Jim. Sorry, never mind. Welcome, Jim. Hi. Could you introduce yourself for everybody out there? Uh, Jim Vees with the Vermont Department of Environmental Conservation that I live on Washington Highway. Welcome. Um, so I don't know how much background you have on this. It's a little foggy, but you might <laughs> recap. Well, okay, so uh, back when Jersey Heights was built, um, the, the main subdivision, uh, I believe Howard Nash, um, there was a state stormwater permit issued for that uh, entire subdivision. Uh, the, the um, I don't know what year that was, but, uh, and the system was built and the um, uh, the permit was issued. The permit has a five-year life. It gets renewed periodically. Uh, the town renewed. The permit came up for renewal at one point after Howard had pretty much finished everything. And uh, the town chose to renew it on their own. And that's because the permit governs the previous surface. And uh, there's roughly three and a half acres, I believe, of town road, and uh, the rest is uh, homes and condominiums. Um, so back in uh, 2018, the legislature, the state legislature, passed Act 64, which required any permitted subdivision that was greater than three impervious acres would have to comply with some new rules. And um, this, this subdivision is, uh, is over three acres, and so it's therefore subject to um, these new requirements. Um, and about three years ago, we got funding, the DEC got funding from Lake Champlain Basin Program to do a priority, a, a, a public-private partnership study to see if there were ways to resolve these permit issues and the expense associated with them. And just as a background, there's probably, I think there's 10 or 15 properties in Morristown and roughly 600 in the basin. And um, ultimately this law is going to go statewide in 2035. And unknown number of properties, but quite a few, at least a thousand. So the, um, a few years ago, we got a grant to do, to, to look at public-private partnerships, and uh, uh, this, there was, they started with about 40 projects and nailed it down, uh, narrowed it down to about 10, and uh, those 10 would get a 30% design to, to meet the requirements of the permit. Permit is now in effect, and or the, the permit was approved, and the first deadline of the permit, the initial notice of intent was, was required, uh, I believe in January of this year, or maybe a little earlier. But anyway, they've uh, complied with that. The town has taken on the responsibility of um, submitting the initial notice of intent. Um, and we sent a letter to the town uh, from this project uh, the state feels like they need to move ahead with these three acre projects as soon as possible. There's a lot of funding available to make these projects get built. And um, the first set of projects they'd like to see built are these public private partnership projects. And again, in this case, it's just town roads and the private impervious surface. That's the partnership, essentially, 
working together. Um, so uh, we wrote a letter to uh, to to Eric to the town uh, committing. We after the thirty percent design was completed, we had a cost estimate uh, for both the final design, engineering, and construction, and that total was about three hundred and fifteen thousand. That a an award letter was sent to the town, um, you know, rec telling them that they, they received the award and would, are they willing to accept it. Um, the alternative is for the town and the homeowners to pay for it themselves or find some other source of funds. I mean, there are some grants. Like I said, there are a number of programs out there, but this particular partnership does not require any match dollars. So it's there's no commitment in terms of From the town final design construction. There is a commitment in terms of long term maintenance of the structure. What is the project? What do they have to build? So there, uh, it gets, it's, this is where it gets a little complicated. There, so apparently uh, there there is a small piece of property within right off Foss Street yep. that Howard Minash owned or owns and intends to give to the homeowners, um, but needs a homeowners association to accept it. Um, but on that parcel would be an underground infiltration system, basically a large septic field that would take, uh, intercept the current pipe that goes down to a small tributary of um, a brook that runs along Randolph River. Yeah. Um, and, uh, shunt it over to the infiltration system and basically soak it up into the ground. Mm -hmm. It's actually a really nice system uh, in terms of phosphorus and sediment removal. It's like almost 100%, which wow. is pretty good. Um, so that's that would be on that parcel. parcel. It would be underground and um, it would have to be vectored out um, once a year on average. Mm -hmm. Um, at this point, the permit is in the town's uh, name and responsibility. So I believe the town is doing any maintenance on the road right of way and any system, any parts of the system. And, um, uh, you know, that, that would need to be redefined in the next, in this new grant and this new permit. Mm -hmm. Um, so the, the, the biggest issue from our end is that the town either has to be willing to take the money and, uh, uh, will hire a contractor and do the finish the final design and, and take it over, or they can, um, Work with landowners. Work with the landowners, but there has to be a homeowners association right. to receive that 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 money, and that be a call for a tea on the current. Um, and my understanding from talking to Bridge and others is that there really is no interest in the homeowners in forming a homeowners association. And I'm not a lawyer, or I would comment on the sidewalk on it. <laughs> I wonder what you're coming with. <laughs> um, there's just no interest in forming associations. If they did, I think we could move faster on this project. Um, but if, in the event that they don't form one, uh, it seems to me someone wrote in the town plan recently another idea, and this might apply in other areas of the, of the town where the town right of Ways in these permanent subdivisions. I, I, um, you know, this is clearly the biggest one, but if, you know, it's also possible in the future if the town were to take over the right of way in a subdivision that had a permit, then they would be responsible. He's associated with it. Um, but so the, the uh, other idea in the town plan was to create an assessment district. Um, to uh, back any cost that the town incurs on the permit 
prorated to what the town owns in, in terms of impervious cover versus what the homeowners own. Right. And I think it's, it's roughly one third, two thirds. Um, uh, by you know by a, a fee, you have to send out a bill. To yeah. Um, and uh, I don't know if they're opposed to that or not. Uh, I mean, I I don't know where the homeowners are on this, but um, that would be one. There's one of two ways of doing this: either they form an association, or they or the town has to approve a, a, an assessment district and uh, charge them. Uh, Appropriation. All right. Yeah. Rich, do you want to speak to that at all? Do you have any comments about that? Um, sure. Spokesperson, yeah. first of all, for the, for the homeowners. And, and, Not official. And, and exactly. Um, and I've spoken to a bunch of folks in the, in the neighborhood, but don't have a formal vote and all of that, that some of the questions that came up from the group was one, if we form a homeowners association and the deed is given to us from wherever the deed is, that what are the ramifications of the future as far as costs, upkeep, things like that? Long term like maintenance. Long term yeah. maintenance and things like that. And yeah. How could that be handled? So it's not like, no, it's that, that piece. And then the, the second piece, which Good suggestion on okay, could it become a district with costs and things like that? And I realize that there's ways for that to happen, kind of like what was being talked about before, that people all have to agree and vote and say that they want to have that done. The question again from the homeowners that was coming to the homes around Jersey Way and Foss Street, Fox Street, the original subdivision there that, mm -hmm. that Howard was building is what other property owners might have. If you do move in that direction, it would be the question, okay, are there other homeowners like the condo association, people on some of the side roads that, that border the property on the other side, right. um, the side roads going off of Route 100, et cetera. So it's more of just questions and the realization that they didn't want to form a homeowners association and have something come on. But then also separate from the whole issue here, I think is the whole not wanting to have a homeowners association that could then branch into other areas that right. what would stop the homeowners association from saying, oh, okay, we want to tax everybody in this yeah. for, for, our, for sidewalks, right. put them on the other side of the street. Right. And all of that and things like that. So just a lot of questions, a lot sure. of legal questions, and you know, we didn't hire a lawyer or anything like that. Right. It's just more of asking questions about how to make this happen and work it for the town and work it for everybody. Um, I'm not saying that would work, but it, it does make sense that the town is trying to move forward in some some fashion. Are, are there legal responsibilities for a homeowners association? Like if you're a homeowners association, do you have a legal, um, you have to like meet other bylaws? Do you, have, do you have all those things you have to put together? Yeah. I would imagine, yes. That's a real estate I've attorney's looked, And is it is it question. like a, you have to do a, a membership or a dues or something? Yeah. So there's a, a legal ramifications doing that. Whether there would be maintenance fees or not maintenance mm -hmm. fees, right. condo associations homeowners okay. have maintenance fees. Mm -hmm. Homeowners could possibly, I guess, be built may, they may not, without any fees. Okay, they may not have to have any fees. Yeah. I didn't know if that, but right. was some reluctance there too that there was res legal responsibilities that came with being an association. Not necessarily, but the the fear of would the homeowners association start instituting right. things like right. this. And, and I mean, it's, I'm not a lawyer, but it seems like if you had an association that was formed strictly for one purpose mm -hmm. and no other, right? Then it could state that. It'd be written up. Yeah. That, yeah. 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 So, what is the town's um, responsibility in this, and what what do we need to do? Well, I mean, we sent a letter. I don't know a month ago or two, and we're waiting for an answer. Um, we'd like to proceed. Technically, the money doesn't need to be, this is uh, federal ARPA money, 
Yeah. And it doesn't need to be encumbered until 2004 and 2024. It doesn't need to be spent until 2026. But I think they want a letter accepting the funds or not accepting the funds yeah. uh, relatively soon. Um, and I mean, the town is on the hook, like I said, for roughly two or one third, one third. of that cost. So roughly $100,000. <coughs> Okay. And then going forward, what are the what's the expense to the town? Factor, well, vector, vector, yeah, vector well, the maintenance the fair. Town owns a vector, but we don't need to go there. But, yeah. uh, uh, it does have to. There are some costs. Or you can hire Minosh yeah. or uh, you know, I don't know, whatever they call it, right. uh, to come in at about $1,000 a day uh, yeah. a visit. So it's not like cleaning out your septic system. Is that what they're doing? Yeah, pretty much. You're just sucking out Similar. the sediment in the catch basin. Okay. We currently have three of those systems on the north end of town that we clean out annually. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And are they a, they're in a development? No, they are. Those are not developments. Those are just the north end of town. The catch basin is one of behind. We're in the vicinity of Country Home Center. One by Professional Drive. By professional Drive. Yeah. 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 So it has to do with impervious surfaces. <laughs> yeah, you're just yeah, they're just sediment traps, basically. And um, you know by doing it the Menage way, it's going to be more expensive than if you did it you could do it cheaper, but it's more convenient to just simply hire someone to come in because they will landfill it or dispose of it properly um, you would have to set up a, a, a disposal area and get, get a permit etc um, right so bob, what I, is it we have to do it here? go ahead don bob i just a quick question i missed part of I just did, didn't hear the number, but if the town were to take this over, one third of the cost would represent about how much money? 100,000. Okay. Roughly. That's the cost of the project. Cost of as doing as the project. As as That's not cost of maintenance or anything. Right. No, cost of the project is being funded by the ARPA money in its right. entirety. Right. No match. It's the annual fees that have to be paid to the state for. Really well, sure. right. There's some annual fees, and then there's also the maintenance. The maintenance. The maintenance. And how much money would that represent? If that's that's a cost we have to bear on the systems. Any system we're we're part of, we have a responsibility for that. Right. Well, we well, don't. So you, you, again, you you guys took over the whole permit. You didn't have to do that. You could renegotiate that. Done before my time, I believe. Well, yes, it was. The first time. But, yeah. it was, but the but second, yeah, town yeah. has one third, really, of that cost. Correct. Mm -hmm. right. So, where we're at loggerheads here is the, the fact that there's reluctance to form the HOA. And you're not going to, there's no leverage to strong arm anybody into forming an HOA. Therefore, we sit here wondering, you know, what, what is the next step? Which is my question exactly. So the town can opt to take over this entire thing. <clears throat> and Jim suggested we could send out buildings every year. I would say that my staff does not have time to build anything more than what they're already doing. The annual calls and all the other stuff they have to do. But we could send out a bill. If they don't pay the bill, then now we've got to send out the second letter and the collections and ready collection. I don't know how that works, but Mm -hmm. It's a complex way of doing it. So then it comes down to do you just do it and the taxpayers of the entire town eat the cost? It's a fairness issue, it's a principled issue on that. But we're at we're at standstill until there's either an HOA that receives the money and then we do the project and then we split the one third, two thirds cost of the annual fees, which is not happening. <laughs> I don't see it happening. Or we just as a town decide, or as a board, we decide that the town will take the entire project, we get it put in, it's not going to cost the taxpayers any money for installation. The, the cost is the annual upkeep, and the, uh, uh, the permit and for the record. Are you looking for an answer from us tonight? It's a complex issue. 
I don't know if the answer is soon. I don't know if tonight is the right night. A lot of information to absorb. I have a long time to do it, and I still get confused over this project. Yeah. Do, do we know what the fees are? Uh, I don't know. That's how much? How much? Twenty-five hundred. Yeah, it's something like two fifty per per acre, roughly eight to nine acres. It's like twenty-five hundred dollars annual. Okay, so we're talking thirty-five hundred with the thousand cleanup. With the pumping. <laughs> Yeah, well, for the thousand dollars, we they would have we spent a thousand dollars right now to get all three of the systems on the okay. town. Okay. But right. it's a thousand dollars for half a day. So if we had to, you know, eventually go with a full day because we have that many systems to do, two thousand dollars a year for that. Okay. Twenty five hundred dollars. Forty five hundred dollars. Yeah. That's yes. Today's numbers, <laughs> and I'm just no. And I would just point out that the town does own a vacuum, but they. I mean, we don't want to share them back. Share them back. strong enough to do the job that it was intended. Well, for for that, for one particular system. Right. But I think that you would work if, but you have to have trained personnel. We own a, we, yeah, we own a share with Stowe, right? Uh, no, it's a uh, hard Oh, yeah, okay. So, Tina, you have... I just have a question, too. I mean, if, if you decided to do this and the town decided to bill the homeowners on an annual basis, is there any uh, repercussions that the homeowners won't pay? Like, currently, um, you know, with the Katie's Falls water system thing, that is uh, an, an additional real estate tax, or I'm going to say property tax, so if people don't pay, you can use Actually, I'm not familiar with it. Um, legal repercussions uh, involved here, depending on which way we go. The one with the least amount of resistance and the least legal repercussions is to is take it the over. town just takes the system, right. we get it installed, no cost to the taxpayers, and we accept the fact we have an annual fee structure here that we have to meet the cost of along the way. I, I don't know any other way to make it more simple to explain it that way. There's an easy road out that is not fair to the entire tax base of the town for the day. Pieces and Eric Dodges who don't live over there, uh, not necessarily fair. If we're talking about the, the total cost of this over. Researching that one trying to figure out exactly who because no matter which way we decide to go we have to have an easement for that property mm -hmm. so and there's that one and there's two other properties on toll that the line is going across their properties uh that goes underground and we have to go across their properties to get to the piece of land that we to request. yeah so there there are some easements to be obtained but i, I haven't been able to the property on the tax max does not show an owner because it has a zero dollar value in the property taxes are received from. Mm -hmm. So I, I now got Mitzi's researching the deeds in the area to find out if there's a deed in, to an association that exists over there. And the condos we can go on. Do you see any other properties like this coming to us for um, the stormwater or whatever well, it's called? Most certainly. Okay. Any, Time that you take over a highway structure, see Jim said, if you take over a road system and there is a stormwater permit involved, you're taking over the stormwater permit as well, mm -hmm. or at least a portion of the share of the cost mm -hmm. at least. So, if, if, if you take over the road, if you take over you the road, have, I think you tighten your rules. Well, we, we, we loosened the restrictions yes. a little bit when we decided to drop the uh, dead end road portion of our roads policy. So we have been taking on more roads that are dead end roads. Uh, previously, they had to be a loop road in order for us to take a uh, road off road. And so many houses on the road. Yeah, yeah what I, yeah, I'm worried about the same thing, the issue of precedence and, um, and especially with so much new construction coming on and the, um, the general feeling of a lot of people in town you know, or the worry about people in town about whether, about how 
the residents are going to bear the cost of development. So I think, I mean, I don't have an answer, but I, I certainly would lean towards the, um, towards the solution of, um, I certainly would lean towards the solution of um, billing the homeowners at the very least in Jersey Heights, if, if it is possible to collect that money. Yeah. So I guess I have very similar concerns, um, you know, going back to Judy's comment there about other projects in town. I worry about precedent as well. And I'm just wondering if we, if we have enough to, to make a decision tonight. It, it, it sounds to me like we don't need to make a decision tonight. We don't need to take action tonight. Is that correct? Maybe, perhaps not tonight, but the funding uh, is what's being held out there is that if there isn't a response in the very near future that the funding can be appropriated to other projects therefore when this project does get put in the ground we'll have to pay for the whole thing come out of the pockets of taxpayers homeowners whomsoever however it's triggered off so if the the timing don is is reference to the funding that is currently uh, earmarked to be appropriated toward the project so Aaron, are you are you are you recommending that we do take some action tonight? I I am stopping way short of a recommendation, Don. This is a seriously it's a complex issue. Okay. I know there's an easy way out, as I've described. There's a more complex issue that would most likely involve attorneys for lots of folks and become very expensive. Uh, so I don't know the answer. The board will have to weigh this one out carefully. I, I can give you an example of a recent development um, that we took on as a road and we recently signed off on the the waste the stormwater permit in conjunction with Pope Meadows. Mm -hmm. So Pope Meadows, we took over the road. The, it has a stormwater system in the ground. It was already installed, already in place. Nick Gaza came as a representative of the Master Homeowners Association for that road in that, that area. They took on the responsibility of paying the annual fees, no cost to the taxpayers. Here, he, he brought that to us as a matter of his attorney recommending it. In fairness, it was the right thing to do. We do own a portion of the impervious service by owning the sidewalks and the streets. So, therefore, we do own a portion of our stormwater permit. We're partnering with them. master HOA over that. So HOA exists strictly for net represents a master HOA that presides above the matter as part of the development of maintenance management. So uh, it's through that development level HOA, I guess you could call it. That uh, he holds the stormwater permit, and share that responsibility. I'm wondering if it might be wise for us to uh, make a motion to accept the money and work work out everything else. I mean, it's three hundred thousand dollars. If we, for some reason, don't get to it in time and we lose that funding, then we're going to have to pay at least a third of that ourselves, and and then still work it all out. You know, if we if we if we say we'll take the money, take the award, like you're saying, and then work out a, a deal later on, you know, we know we have to research more about the deeds and who owns what, but I'm, I'm thinking that might be wise for us to at least accept the award money because we know we have to do it. It's, it's a state thing. We have to do it, right, Jim? Right. So, that. Can we accept the award money when we don't know if we own the land? I mean, well, we still have to pay for a third of it anyway. Because of the impervious right, surface. Put it on there. Right. If you don't own the land and you don't get an easement for it, you can't just put that on there. Now you've committed to a three hundred thousand dollar grant that you can't use. Um, can anyone from the development speak to the likelihood of getting the easements? It sounded like the um the land wasn't wasn't valuable 
for development? No, I, I don't know what the story is. It's sort of, um, I think it was supposed to have been a common land or a park or something. Oh, the, the, it's a common land between the, the properties on Jersey Way, Boss Street, and then what's the two side streets that come off of Hoop 100? Is it Audi Lane? Best and Audi? Audi yeah, Audi Lane is one of them. Yeah, yeah. I think Those Best two, is the other one, right? Two lanes. Best Street. Yeah. And so, yeah, and that, that's, a that's in the middle. Yeah. That's in the middle of all those, that, right. that area. That's where the system would be set up? Yeah. And it would be underground, so it wouldn't really change. Yeah, somebody has to go through all those properties to get there and dig it up. No, there's an access road. Oh, okay. Like on the Foss Street, I think yeah, there's a exactly. possibility. There's a property and, with it. And the way it was designed, I, it could be that um, you, there's an existing town uh, drainage easement, I believe. And yeah. I'm sure that pipe has an easement. And uh, it probably could tie into that or use that easement. Mm -hmm. Be next, you know, be a pipe next to it rather than have a new a new outfall and a new easement on somebody else's home. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, and he's gonna love me for this, but Tyler Mumley is on uh, Zoom with us tonight and he is responsible for a portion of the design that's been done or has done some of the design work here. He may be able to speak at that piece. Tyler, did you hear that? Hello, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes. Sorry about that. <clears throat> um, feeding the kiddos dinner. Can you say that again, Eric? So Tyler, we're, we're getting into discussions about the uh, the design of the system, and where that the outlet for the system itself would be able to tie into an existing pipe that's in the ground. Is that how you understood that design to work? Yeah, the uh, the thirty percent design that was done kind of concentrated in a certain portion of the property, and then it had a in ground in ground system. So it was really more self contained and containing. And, and, and overlapping over a portion of the property. Right now, there's a collection system uh, on a portion of the property and it, and it has that outlet kind of off the corner of Foss Street. Right, Tyler, but the, the new system uh, has, a, has a separate outlet and could, it, could the new system just tie into the existing outlet and, or use the existing easement uh, I, I can't say that for sure or not. I, I believe that where that where that in-ground system was designed was pretty close to that that false outlet. So the idea is you could theoretically pipe it there. I just I don't know right now exactly where those locations are on the ground or in the ground and where those easements are. That's something we could figure out pretty easily. Go ahead, Brian. So I think from here and that, I think we ought to check into is that place even there for us? And how do we get to there? And I also like the idea of if we come up with this money, then so there's no cost to taxpayers, anybody, and then it's just a fee that maybe we can talk to the people that live up there, just like Nick did, and pay even the good, good share of it themselves. They can dream of. We're getting the money for them. And there's no HOA in Jersey Way. Nick has the power of an HOA up there. He has a master HOA, and then the homeowners themselves have their own HOA. Mm -hmm. So it's a different scenario when that comes to be. But uh, yeah, there, there are possibilities. And we, we can do a little more site work uh, with Tyler to see if it's possible to tie it in. But uh, in, in the meantime, I'll continue to uh, find out the owner see if an easement within the town is a possibility. And is this money, is there a deadline to accept this money? Well, I don't think the state, I don't want to speak for the state. Wait yeah. Yeah, the state's not going to wait forever. They haven't said anything hard in the sand, but, mm -hmm. you know, if, if, the, if it's going to end up in a legal battle and be uh, dry out for a extended period of time, then 
they're going to utilize water right elsewhere. I mean, that's, that's the indication we got. I, right. I, I don't have it in writing. It's not been spoken to me, but it's, it's a common sense application of this mm -hmm. that they're not just going to let three hundred fifteen thousand dollars sit there until we, we decide what we're going to do. Right. How many? And also, Eric, I would I would also say that there is there is also a timeline for the the whole three acre rule process. So we submitted an initial NOI on behalf of the town, and then um, when this all kind of came to light with the grant, they allowed us uh, to to reapply, but we'd have to reapply as the town and as the HOA as as co essentially co applicants. So we've kind of been waiting on the HOA to form, but in the light of no HOA forming, we would have to move forward uh, with the actual permit requirements and the permit process. There's a, the initial NOI has been submitted, but there has to be a full NOI submitted with the full design. The the thirty percent design was done initially, and Jim could probably speak to the, how that went down. But th they came up with a design. But again, it's it's a thirty percent design, meaning it's it's a, it's initial, it's a draft, it's a for all intents purposes a sketch, and so that has to be taken to the the end line and do a full design, you know, and submit a full app stormwater permit application. Um, and we've been holding off on that process until the, the grant funding kind of came to fruition. Okay. How many residents, how many houses are there in the area that would be affected by that? Is it like 50 or something like that? Yeah, yes, that's, 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 that's just a guess on the on the Minosh development, not counting the condos. And mm -hmm. Well, the condos is part of this. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Only the part of the parts of that were in the subdivision are, are really impacted by the Alley Lane is not impacted by this. They weren't a part of the original so oh, Okay, but the condo association. Right. So we, yeah. we, and that is a homeowners association. Yeah. The, the condo association. Yeah. I'm just figuring it's like 50 bucks a house for the fee per year. The other, the other thing I, I would mind saying is that that 30% design fee, they base it on using a in-ground infiltration system. Um, it is a, it is a costly system and it works well uh, in tight situations. Um, but they hadn't gone through the whole process yet of uh, on-site visits and on-site test pits um, for infiltration testing of the soils and such, and in doing so, there there are opportunities for other other mechanisms, other other stormwater treatment systems that could be utilized. Um, and, and what they propose is a really good solution, as Jim said. It it really takes care of a lot of um, a lot of the issues as far as water quality goes. Uh, but there are there are other options that could be feasible uh, once we get once we get more into the uh, the depths of of the analytics and the design process and the testing. Is it safe to say that the money is not going to disappear in the next two weeks? And also, is it safe to say that we might know much more about this two weeks from now? I think that is safe to say, Don. I think it's, uh, if, if we're showing forward progress, you know, if Jim can go back, to be honest, speak for Jim here. If Jim can go back and, and uh, report back to his seniors that, we're at least making movements forward to, to, to further this process and the planning, then they're going to be a little more patient with us. So they just aren't going to wait forever. Right. But, I, yeah, I understand that. I just, I'm just wondering if the next two weeks are, are critical. If we need to make a decision, you know, tonight, if not, then table it for tonight and let's make, continue this conversation in two weeks. So Eric, do you think that the, uh, title research would be done in. I, I think I can get an answer as to who owns the property within the next two weeks. Uh, as far as the rest of it goes, I, that officially I don't know for sure. Right. But if I can find out who owns it or has control of the property, if it is an association, then it's a matter of meeting with them to get permission to the easement. Yeah. Uh, so that's. I mean, the other thing about an assessment district um, is the, the, that it has to be in the Think it has to be a there has to be a town wide vote to approve that. You can't just create one. I just can't create a block plan. An, an assessment district. If you were to oh, charge to do the building the piece, piece yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 that's probably the case. I don't know for sure. It makes sense. I, it, this is unrelated, but it's interesting that 
we've talked about um, having the cost of replacing, repairing, or reconfiguring our uh, sewer system in town, like the, the plant, the sewer plant. And some of the residents who don't use a sewer plant were here saying, I don't want to have to pay for that. But they're the same people who would be asking us, the town, to pay for their assessment for this stormwater. Just a thought. Any sense to anybody? But... I understand what you're saying. I think the folks over there are on the Big Ten Village water sewer. Yeah. In that okay. So they, they all participate in that. But okay. that, was, that was kind of the some of the thinking with the something. Tyler, can you uh, can you give me a call tomorrow about availability and we can go over and perhaps walk the property? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. We'll, uh, so you need first stuff up with Tyler we'll to go over and take a look. And meanwhile, I'll try and find out who has control of the property. Okay. And we'll come back I'll think a property is two, two acres, just lower. Three, three, three. Oh, three, five. Oh, that the instead of the filtration system will go. Yeah, it's just over two acres. Oh, okay. okay. No, I was so gonna say that. Sorry. So basically, what we're trying to find out in two weeks is whether or not um, we're going to have to. We can. The project would be able to be done without easements. Um, but we wouldn't be able to decide whether we're going to be able to tax the homeowners until the next town meeting. And like, even if we were going to um, put the town lot, the the assessment, new assessment district to a vote. Is that am I am I summarizing that correctly? No, no, because it sounds right. And we're not sure if you come to look into it because we did the we did the sidewalk for taxpayers that lived on them. Right. They call it a tip. Yeah. So maybe we could do that and we did it for sidewalk. That's right. But that doesn't need voter approval. Yeah. No. Just no, yeah. no, no, no. No, I'm talking about. I'm talking about the. Um, Jim was saying that in order to approve a new assessment district, which I'm taking to mean a district where we t we we bill them for the the annual maintenance fee for this system, in order to even know whether um, in order to know whether we can actually bill the residents um, for the annual maintenance, we wouldn't be able to do that until can next time. I, I want to look into that just to get. I'm not, I'm not educated on the assessment district, so I've got to do some research on that as well to bring to you, provide okay. you with some information on that, how that, how that process works. Okay. So I don't know. Right, so yeah, we're just looking for this. Here. I know we can't, but I would think that common sense would say, we've got a group of people who have a system that they should have to maintain, and they could all sign an agreement on the thing. The difference with it says district is we're not charging people any money. Yeah. They're paying their property tax and we're choosing to uh, take the additional of what their property evaluated for being the TIF district and using it to pay the loan off. We aren't charging them a fee. There's a big difference. I was just referring to the town plan. There was some discussion about yeah. that. Okay. Can we move forward? Is, is that all you got for us, Jim? On that, <laughs> Jim, that's enough. <laughs> no. Well, I was going to say that you know, you know, these these properties, Jersey Heights, uh, um, the um, shopping center, Northgate, um, the uh, trailer park on First, Second, Third, and Fourth Street, yeah. and um, uh, Ken Harvey's place, and the other Minash development all have some little pieces of town road. And I know that a lot of those owners are working on compliance and they haven't brought this up so maybe they don't. Right. Um, I mean, they're not huge fractions of the mm -hmm. Yeah, I can just, just on that real quick, I can say that Ken Harvey's property is likely going to come off the three acre list totally. And um, majority of the southern half of Northgate Plaza will probably have internal <laughs> um, internal stormwater system. 
just FYI. Right, and we did, there's also Price Chopper, and they have rooms. They have their another pond. Yeah. And then for Morrisville Plaza, we had actually built the town homes yeah. the easement for that system so that they should meet their requirements. Right. Maybe. And, and actually, they might take over the maintenance on that one mm -hmm. because it's really their property. Right, to private. Yeah. Private building. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming in tonight, Jim. I, I know the town's pretty fortunate we have somebody like you here to uh, <laughs> clear the waters for us. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Next, number two, discuss B Street to B Jam sidewalk project. Do you want me to jump into this? Todd. Sure. By the way, jump Jess, right in. Jess, you are correct. A special tax district needs town meeting approval. So that is correct. All right. So B Street to uh, B Jam sidewalk. So Basically from where Jersey Height ends, Laporte Road takes over out to the Bishop Marshall traffic underpass, pedestrian underpass. There are sections of sidewalk being built by developer, by developers this year. And what the planning council is looking to do, as you'll see in your package, is complete the sidewalk. So once the developers get done building their sections of sidewalk, there will be gaps in the sidewalk. What we're trying to do is fund the difference so we can actually have a complete sidewalk so someone can walk from the village to the Bishop Markle School on a sidewalk for the first time. Uh, in your package is a cost estimate for that. The board has already signed off on a majority of this route for the, uh, for the sidewalk. There's one change in front of Wyatt Jennison's house and Jason MacArthur's house. The sidewalk, instead of being cantilevered off the ravine, is going to go on the edge of pavement in front of those houses instead of on the edge of the grass to avoid the four silver maples that are there. We want to kill the maple trees. So that's really the one thing the select board needs to consider tonight. The select board's previously already approved the sidewalk schematic from B Street, which is now Feline Loop, out to Bishop Marshall. We're changing one section in front of two houses to avoid killing four trees. So that's what we're looking to get approved tonight. How would the, the sidewalk, what we have in front of us are these drawings. Um, so they, I don't have numbers. There. So they're not continuous. So they have, people have to cross the street, correct? They're gonna cross 100 at some point to continue on the sidewalk? Correct. If the planning council, the planning council is pushing, is asking for a town meeting ballot item for the uh, for this funding based on the cost estimate Tyler Mumley did, which you have in your package. I think it's uh, roughly $173,000, $173,000. So they'd like the select board to put that in the town meeting um, as a ballot item. And the second thing is we need to get the uh, sign off on the route change in front of those two houses, Judy. So yes, if we don't fund the $173,000, there'll be sections of sidewalk gap, sections of sidewalk gap, sections of sidewalk gap, come this fall okay uh, can you todd can you explain to me i'm looking at the estimate and i'm seeing the one hundred seventy three thousand dollars for the path of construction but then the additional one hundred fifty thousand dollars for the miscellaneous which um, brings the total up to three hundred twenty three thousand so dollars that's if you use state and federal money so if we don't use uh state especially federal money you can pretty much ignore the miscellaneous section <laughs> so Okay, <laughs> so we're ignoring stormwater system tie-in and upgrades if we don't use the the state money. Yeah, this was uh, this was for the uh, the oh, so that's a big one. Anyway. Yeah, this the section the miscellaneous section and maybe Tyler if he's still there can jump in was for the A Street to B Street project. It was carried over. That was federal funds. Uh, there are no free lunches in life. Using that grant uh, that. Senator Jeffers grant cost us more money than it would have cost us to build it with local dollars. So things like the miscellaneous things aren't needed on a local project, like design permit and construction oversight, that $50,000 is only needed to ensure the federal money is spent correctly. And this is only a $173,000 project. You don't need the, uh, using the federal money will balloon it to twice the cost. Mm -hmm. how, how much would the federal money be for? Well, we probably wouldn't get it anyway, but uh, we could request and try to seek grants. It would also take 10 years to build a sidewalk. 
the A Street to B Street project, which was built three years ago, was Senator Jeffers' federal money, which is before Bernie Sanders. So that tells you how long it takes to get federal money and actually get the project to fruition. You're going to have a sidewalk with a bunch of gaps in it this summer. So uh, the best case scenario is if we go to town meeting uh, asking for the 173,000 as a ballot item, if town meeting approves it, we'll have a functional sidewalk by the summer, late summer of 2023. If we use federal money, we'd be lucky to have a federal sidewalk by 2033. Okay. Where's this? That's such an error. Um, can you also, my copy, um, and I, I'm imagining it's the same for everyone. Um, the resolution isn't um, super clear. So um, can you kind of slowly and methodically walk us through um, exactly, exactly where the sidewalk is? Maybe starting from, I don't know if you want to start from Bishop Mar Marshall. So yeah, and I'm which side of, And which side of the street? I, I'm not trying to be a pain. I just um, I just can't picture it. So starting on this page of your package, looks like this. Yep. So the uh, the far left side of that screen uh, of the page is the Bishop Marshall pedestrian underpass. Yep. The yellow section, this will be built by Graham Mink this summer. So Bishop Marshall from the underpass to the Irving gas station was built by Graham this summer. The Irving gas station has an existing sidewalk, which is why it's shown in orange. What Graham is building this summer is shown in, shown in yellow. So that page is no cost to the taxpayers. Graham is building the yellow section. Uh, the orange section was already built by RL Valley. There's a requirement for a DRB permit. And then- uh, We have no color. Sorry, Eric? These diagrams don't have any color. They're looking at black and white. We have color. We, 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 we have color in ours. My bad. I'm going on. <laughs> <laughs> Eric doesn't have color. We do. So, um, and also, can you can you explain to me, um, Todd? Is it on the if you're heading into town? Is it on the right side or the left side of the street? This if you're heading into town from Bishop Marshall, it's on the right hand side of the street. Okay. So all this is previously approved by the select board before. If you go to C six, C six shows the change. Yep. So the one change in route is in the middle of that page on C six. You'll see a sidewalk and see the section in, well, for those who have color, the section in uh, the pink. Yeah. Sidewalk to be completed by others. You'll see my note, my note there with the arrow pointing down. Uh, we're moving the section of sidewalk from the ravine side of the street, which is the north side of the street, to Jason MacArthur and J Wyatt Jennison side of the street, which is between Jersey Way and Audi Lane. Moving that section of sidewalk uh, right there will save us approximately $75,000. So the one thing we're doing there, we originally put the sidewalk on the other side of the street because we didn't want to kill the mature trees there. What we're doing instead to save the roughly $75,000 is building the sidewalk on the edge of pavement. So that edge of uh, that little stretch of road right there will be narrower than the rest of the road. It'll act as traffic calming and it will allow us to not cut down all the trees by building the sidewalk on that side of the street. We can't really afford to build the sidewalk and can't deliver it out over the ravine. It's not something that's uh, financially doable, not with the budget we have. So Todd, is there gonna be like a crosswalk right near Audi Lane there? Correct, so you'll see uh, with the sidewalk coming from left to right in the page, so from west to east, you go across uh, th from the left side of the page, the Aether property that will be built by a developer either next year or this year, that's Bob Provost. And then there's a town section that's being built in pink. It crosses out Elaine and then the sidewalk will, there'll be a crosswalk across the street, getting to that section in yellow, which Graham is gonna build, I think this summer, if Act 250 permits that project this summer. Mm -hmm. And then you're finishing the lower part of that page. The town will be finishing the sidewalk in front of Bob Henu's property and then out to B Street, which is now yeah, Feet Street. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And Todd, we can't we can't get a walk like there, can we? A walkway? I'm sorry, Judy. What, like we have out in front of the uh, town offices? You could, if you, you, you could if you wanted to fund it. It's just an additional four thousand dollars or so. So if you wanted sure. to take the cost estimate and bump it up by five thousand dollars, you could have a a rapid response pedestrian controlled beacon like that there. Yes. Will the state allow us to do that? It's town road right away. We can do whatever we want to okay. do. Okay. All right. So the whole if we thing, if, the whole if thing's we, down road right away. 
If we include, if we don't have to do that miscellaneous spending, then we could put it in our budget there. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So, do we know what we need to make a motion for? So, there again, there are two things the select board needs to do. One is agree to move the sidewalk in front of uh, the Jason MacArthur House and Wyatt Jenison House instead of Cantor leaving it across the ravine on the middle of page C6 there. That's the one change we've done from the select board's previously approved this sidewalk schematic. That's the one change we're making to it tonight. The second thing, so that should be one motion. The second motion would be to the planning council voted to ask the select board to put on a town meeting, uh, town meeting ballot item for town meeting to fund this sidewalk. And for the sake of uh, giving a little wiggle room, especially if we want to add a light like Judy's, instead of 173, we can put it to 200,000 and always refund the money if we want. I'd Someone be wanted. willing to make a motion that we move the sidewalk from the west side to the east side, as Todd has just described. Second. I have a motion by Don and a second by Brian. Is there any? I'd like to amend it. How do we do that? How you to add it? the walk light. Is that what you, are you, you adding that in there too, Don, or no? You adding the walk light, Don? I can add the walkway as well. The light, yes. All right, thank you. Okay, that's an emotion. That's a second motion. I don't know what you're doing. The 200,000. No, that's uh, well, moving it to the other side. See, right now we're just voting to move the walkway. Moving it. Yeah. Then we're going to vote. So. Okay, to the okay. walkway. Okay. That's so, Judy, I think, right. you're, I think it would make more sense in the second motion to amend the budget to include that. Okay. Okay. All right, any further discussion on this first motion? Um, I just, I'm curious to know, um, Todd, you mentioned that it would have a traffic calming effect. Um, and I'm wondering um, if the planning council had a um, discussion around that. And if, and if there's, um, I'm sure there's um, criteria in place um, around um, buffers between the sidewalk and a road. I mean, I, I love those trees and I, I absolutely wouldn't want to, to, um, to, to cut down the trees for a sidewalk, but I'm, I'm wondering if, you know, how we would protect the, the pedestrians if, um, from what I'm understanding, from what I'm understanding, that means that there'd be, where there'd be no shoulder between the, um, the sidewalk and the, and the cars. No, or there'd still be a, there'd be sidewalk, vertical granite curbing and a three foot shoulder and then the travel lane. So ample space. The curb is what really protects pedestrians from the cars, so the cars can't jump up onto the sidewalk. And so, how would it um, how would it look or feel different than um, the the way the um, a standard configuration would? Uh, really, the shoulder is one <laughs> foot narrower than typical. Sh shoulders are generally four feet wide. Uh, the shoulder, like okay. the fog line into the to the curb, okay. will be three feet wide. And really the main difference is the travel lane is narrower. The travel lane is going to be shrunk by a couple of feet. So that's really where you're getting the sidewalk with thumb is the travel lane. So when you, when you approach this, if you're coming from Stowe, you're approaching downtown Morrisville on the section of Jersey Heights, you're going to see the sidewalks really come in right here. So it's going to be like, if you drive to the best example I can give you, if you drive to Danville on route 15, you get towards Danville and then you right as you enter the village, there's a little section where the median and the road gets a little narrower. It'll feel like that here. The road's going like to shrink for you a little bit, and you're going to automatically want to brake or slow down if you're driving, which I think is a good thing. And will there be like requ required signage, and and it will it limit like big truck traffic? I just know uh, that yeah. like, that's leading. I um, it leads into that windy little section of road right there, um, which people do kind of go too fast on anyway. But um, just wondering about. I just wondering about safety. Yep, no, it's perfectly safe. Tyler Mumley signed off on it. It's already uh, been blessed by the planning council and the engineer. Okay. But it's gonna slow down, slow down traffic. So it's gonna help with that little windy section of road down the hill. It's gonna be very helpful. The speed limit is 25 on that section of road and most cars are going probably 40. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
So for a second motion, uh, something like uh, to, to put forward a town meeting ballot item, including the additional cost of a pedestrian controlled rapid response crosswalk beacon and the amount of $200,000 to complete the Jersey Heights sidewalk as shown on the plans tonight for the, for the voters to vote for it. Something like that. Should we vote on this first motion first? Oh, I'm sorry. Good point, Don. Thank you. I think I, the town is muted. Their internet is cutting out. Yeah, you know. They're also mute. Oh, they're yeah. okay. You guys are muted. <clears throat> Those of us on Zoom can talk to each other. <laughs> you guys just holding the meeting on your own? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Welcome back. So how did you vote? <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> so what was the further discussion? Uh, we were just talking about you guys being muted. Yeah. Um, I think we have to vote on the, on the we first haven't. one. We haven't. I just yeah, asked voted on, on, the no. on the first one. Yeah. We need to vote on that. Yes. Any further discussion about it? All in favor say aye. 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 Donna Jess? I, the yeah, the yeah. further discussion was around um, that the shoulder will just be one foot narrower and the planning commission approved the, the details of it. Okay. All right, motion is passed, 5-0. Next motion. I would like to make a motion to put, to add a walk light to this um, budget. Well, we also want to, that's supposed to go with the other motion. Yeah. We to put it on the ballot. Oh, and include well, a walk light. So, if you put it on the ballot, you won't when you put it on the ballot. The time you next year, on a two hundred thousand dollar. Okay. Item, All right. That would include the cost of your work. All right. Right. So move. Okay. Second. I have a motion by Judy and a <laughs> second by Brian. Did you folks get that, Donna Jess? Yes. Is there any further discussion about this? Um. While we're talking about adding things to the budget, um, I'm wondering, um, and and I, in light of the stormwater system discussions, um, um, I'm just wondering, uh, you know, I'm seeing in the stormwater system tie-ins um, a fifty thousand um, dollar line item that uh, that we're not, you know, we're not looking at that number, but is there anything um, around, um, you know, making sure that the stormwater system tie-in tie-ins are there? And making sure everything's all up to up to speed while we're in the process, or um, can anyone speak to that? Can Tyler, anyone... you want to tackle that one? If you're still there, let me text him. I have no idea. <laughs> Hello, how are you doing? I don't, know this, I don't know if the stormwater system ends if it continues toward the urban station or not. Can you hear Tyler, me? Okay. Tyler, Tyler, fire away. Yeah, so you know when we did that initial cost analysis, it was based on a VTrans project following MMB processes for VTrans and such. Um, and so things like stormwater connection are really dependent on having to go through the VTrans approved process and you know getting the getting the plans approved and all that is entailed. So in this situation, being a town road, we're really just focused on the sidewalk. And so there are some areas out there where there's catch basins along the road and such that obviously we have to be aware of. But I mean, from a full blown stormwater project, this is not this is not what that is. Those numbers in the uh, additional items section are really um, conservative estimates based on our experience with going through a VTrans project process with either state or federal funding. Does that answer your question, Jess? Mama? um i think so i just um you know i just i, I come from i'm looking at it just from a um you know a do, like a due diligence and a you know wanting to preserve the integrity of our our water and our storm water and i you know i just want to make sure that we're not cutting costs just to cut costs and that you know it's it's like a fairly sizable project um and I just don't want to get into a situation later down the road where we're like we're backpedaling and having to, you know, fix something that we could have 
you know, dealt with in the initial construction process, you know, like my thinking is if we're already going to the town, um, to the voters for money, like, let's just make sure that, um, you know, everything is, um, you know, as well built and, and integrated into the, um, the, in the existing systems as possible. I might, I guess I could add then to say that like, there's, you know, there are stormwater systems out there. There's, there's catch basins and storm pipes, which I think if Eric had a magic wand would probably love to get in there and replace them. But those, those are improvements and any additional stormwater improvements were never a part of the project anyways. It's just that that $50,000 as an example for that stormwater uh, line item was just making sure that we had costs covered in the estimate to account for having to do stormwater connections in accordance with VTRAN's requirements for a project this size. So again, it's like, it's really more of an inflated Okay. To just do what is typical as far as connection with stormwater, but you know we're not we're not avoiding having to do some larger stormwater project like that was never part of the the analysis or the cost estimate. So if there are stormwater improvements to be done, those were never part of the consideration, anyways. Okay. Any further discussion on this motion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Donna, Jess. Aye. Um, yeah, I, but I, yeah, I guess, bye. Okay, any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Next, discuss amendment to the Declaration of Inclusion. I'll start with making a motion to leave it alone. We discussed this, we passed it, we signed it. It's gone on the website. Um, I don't see much difference in the other wording. I think, you know, that's my motion. You make a motion? We got a motion by Brian. Is there a second? Um, that, well, that wasn't what we were going to discuss. Uh, so I guess <laughs> that seems a little premature, yeah. but I don't know if I can. I can, um, I guess so I can I go on the floor. So okay. is there a second? Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, there's a second. All right. Okay, any further discussion on it? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so the reason that um, that we're interested in- um, That's in, what I'm thinking, that's the pie hole. Uh, Trisha, I think you need to, uh, to mute. Okay. Um, <laughs> Someone needs to mute. Um, so right, initially, right. so the ads it wouldn't let me do, but an actual website. <laughs> okay, so um, so the original statement um, was from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns that we um, that we tweaked just a little bit, um, and I felt great about all of that. But um, what I'm concerned about, and I believe what um, the reason also that Don asked that we revisit it is because. Um, we really want to um, put in put into this declaration that we are committing as a town to um, to act on the policy um, and not just to make kind of like an open statement. Um, and so I think it's really important to add the language um, that we will um, strive to ensure all of our actions, policies, and operating procedures reflect reflect this commit commitment. Because to me, otherwise, it's um, it's really just, it's just in writing and it's not, it doesn't really necessarily have the teeth behind it. I would just add, I, would, I agree with Jess and I would add that, you know, this is the language that the Vermont League of Cities and Towns has put out there. They put it out there for a reason. They've, they've uh, suggested this is something that, that all the towns and cities in Vermont ought to be looking at. Um, what we're adding is simply the second half. I'm, I'm looking at the page where the, the new suggested draft, I know we're <clears throat> voting on a different motion right now, but, and I, I believe Brian said the motion is to leave this alone, correct? Yes. And so I'm looking at the page, it has the three separate paragraphs to it. 
And I think what's significant is in that second paragraph where it says, it's the end, <clears throat> the end of that paragraph and it says, we'll strive to ensure all of our actions, policies and operating procedures reflect this commitment. I, I think that's, a, that's an action statement. That's um, not just talking the talk, but walking the walk a little bit on something I think that's very important. And I would also add, and this was gonna come up in my select board concerns later on in the meeting, but you know, we just had this tragic, horrific event happen in Morrisville recently. And we, I asked to revisit this language before that event took place, but that event has taken place. And I wanted to, you know, send congratul or, you know, just uh, thanks and appreciation to our police department for taking, uh, taking care of that. That was gonna come up later, but since I, since I did bring that up, I thought I'd just say that now, but, I, I do think this is an important important statement. Um, I I think it's a I think it's a significant thing to add, but I think in, in terms of the number of words, uh, it's not that much. And uh, I, I'd be I'd be proud to have this as part of our statement of inclusion for the town of Morristown. Okay, is there any further discussion on this motion? In this one that we asked says we formally condemn the discrimination all in cases to the fullest extent of the law. So we we're already saying we're going to do that. And our guys did it. Um, I'm all right. I, I still think it's the right thing to do because we keep getting things passed. Come back two weeks later, somebody tries to it or something else. And I, I just, is, I think the one we did went over. Proposed it, passed it, it's on there. I just, that's my thought. Yeah, I understand I am. your frustration. I, I, I agree that the, it, it, uh, the, the one we adopted doesn't have like an action to it. It really needs to have some kind of action yeah. for it to be a, uh, have any appropriateness. Well, it does have an action. <clears throat> All right, so Brian, I do agree with you. You know, we we are revisiting this, and it was four weeks ago that we adopted this <laughs> statement. And I know I, for one, said, "Hey, let's just adopt something, get something on the books, and and move on with that meeting." But uh, with the idea that we would revisit it, I I don't plan to revisit this again. Yeah, same. All right. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. 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 Motion failed, three, two. So do we have a new motion? Can I make Our a motion discussion? that we accept the uh, statement of inclusion as, uh, <clears throat> boy, I don't have a page number here, but. Well, it's, a, it's the, the one, one that says draft. draft on it. It says draft on it. Yeah, I've got a couple of, yeah, right. It does say draft on it. Yep. I make a motion that we accept the statement of inclusion as worded on the page that says draft. Second. I have a motion by Don and a second by Judy. Any further discussion? Um, Don I, and Judy, I'm wondering, um, I'm just going back and forth um, between all the three versions in our packet. And um, I, I'm wondering if we want to amend the original um, declaration um, that was sort of um, condensed and reworded um, from the original, or if we just go with this Vermont League of C Cities and Towns um, and and you know do the the change of um, fair um, fair and equitable treatment. Can I say? Oh, we do. It. Sorry, we do. So. Oh. Never mind. Tom's got a motion to adopt this one. It says draft. Okay. Yes. I gotcha. I almost agree with her though now because if you're going to do anything, we passed this one. I know. We've already done. so. I think we have to amend. Amend it. Amend it or Brian, you're probably right. Delete it. Perfect. Yeah. I mean, right now this. Make is a motion there. to amend it. Passed and it's in there. Okay. Yeah. So if you're going to do anything, do so your, your motion should say a motion to amend the current 
statement, declaration of inclusion, to read as this draft does. Yeah, I agree. Otherwise, I think we have two two statements of inclusion, don't we? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I can. Uh, do you want me to withdraw the motion or amend the motion? I can just amend it. Just restate. Just so, restate it. So, uh, we haven't voted on it yet. So <laughs> I, I move that we amend my motion to. Um, no, no, let me hold you up. I'm sorry. If you amend your motion, then you have to vote on the amendment, then vote on the motion. Right. What I'm asking you to do is withdraw your original motion and okay. make a new motion, which would be to to amend to the to current amend declaration. The original declaration of inclusion to uh, to reflect the draft that you have in front of you. Okay. Thank you, Eric. So um, I I withdraw my motion. Okay. Is there a new motion? I'll make, I'll make a motion that <laughs> we amend the original Morristown Declaration of Inclusion Statement to include the language as stated on the page labeled draft. There you go. All right. All right. Second. Second by Judy. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Don. Jess. Any opposed? <laughs> uh, I vote no. Motion is three one one. Pass. All right. Cut through that. Hopefully, we don't have to go over that for a while. We will have that for you for signature. Later this week. I'll let you know when we have these documents ready for you to sign. Okay. As soon as I have the signatures on this one, I will swap them out. Okay, number four, approve ARPA standard allowance election. This is uh, not as complex, complex as it might seem. I'm going to let Tina speak to it. This was. Uh, brought to us and whoever are my families of cities and towns is their recommendation. It involves the ARPA funding we currently receive. And I will let Tina explain through the language that was given to us what we're doing and why. You have the floor, Tina. Um, this, um, what I'm asking you to vote on tonight has nothing to do with how you spend your ARPA money. I just, in terms of specifics, right. okay? This is something that Vermont League of Cities and Towns, um, I, I'm going to read this to you, and then if you have questions, you can just ask me. <clears throat> Eligible uses for ARPA funding fall into four broad categories, public health, negative in economic impacts, premium pay, investments in water, sewer, and broadband, and revenue loss. Revenue loss provides recipients with broad discretion to use funds for the provision of government services. This category provides for the most flexibility in use and also has the least burdensome reporting requirements. Even if you're doing a project that would fall under one of the other three categories, you may report it under revenue loss to take advantage of the streamlined reporting. In fact, Treasury has encouraged this as a recent webinar. So how much of my award can I use for revenue loss? The entity may use its entire ARPA award for the provision of government services under the revenue loss category up to $10 million. So how do we go about determining what the dollar amount of the revenue loss of rev loss revenue due to COVID is? Originally, there was a formula. It was complicated and the Treasury received a lot of feedback that it was just too much and it was changed with the final rule. Under the final rule, any entity may either one, still use the formula, or two, take the standard allowance to determine the amount of lost revenue due to COVID. Treasury's final rule says the Treasury is presuming all entities experienced lost revenue during, due to COVID of up to $10 million. As such, an entity may elect the standard allowance and use up to 10 million of their ARPA funds for the provision of government services under the revenue loss category without doing the complicated calculation. 
all recipients have only one chance to elect the standard allowance, and that is as part of the re report due April 30th. Taking the standard allowance doesn't change the amount of your award, nor does it constitute an obligation of funds or a project. It just says we intend to use our award under revenue loss up to the standard allowance. The report asks you to choose whether or not you want to take the standard allowance and how much of your award you are going to use towards revenue loss. The recommendation is to say yes, we want to take the entire award amount as the standard allowance. This eases the overall administrative burden, simplifies the reporting requirements, and allows for the most flexibility in using the funds at a later date. That's from BLC. That's a mouthful. Uh, it is, but it's a very important. Uh, I need to I need to do my first report to Treasury by the 30th of April. We have one chance to elect this standard allowance. All the towns around have been doing this. Water and Light just did it, the Village just did it, Stowe's done it. What it, it allows us to do is it allows us to say we're going to take all of our funds and use it for government services, which is what we would do anyway, I would assume. But it doesn't obligate us to any one thing at this particular time. It can be determined later on, but we have to make this election. And so I'm asking you, I have a motion somewhere. Yep. I'm asking you to make a motion to accept this. Okay. How much money is it we have? I knew you'd ask. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to have. We don't have it all yet because it's not all here. We have some of it. One million twenty-four thousand seven hundred eighteen dollars and forty cents. Forty cents. Forty cents. Nice. Where's the motion? <clears throat> is there a written motion that says? Well, there is in that yellow folder. No, that's the. No. That's the uh, warrant. Hold on. I'm sorry. <laughs> the long and the short of it is the federal government gets such pushback from municipalities of all sizes said your formula is nightmarish. We can't figure it out. They found a way around it without violating the law. And this is this is the way. How you do it. Brian, do you have a motion? Yes. I move that the town of Morristown make the one time in what's that word? Irrevocable. 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 <laughs> Decision to elect the standard allowance approach approach for a RPA award. I have a motion by Brian. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Judy. Any further discussion on this? I just want to thank Tina. I think this this is great. Thank you very much for being clear. Good one. Thanks, Tina. Thank you, Tina. All in favor, say aye. 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 Jess. Aye. Don. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Thank you, Tina. You're welcome. Thank you. I like your voice. Really projects. It's great. I know. I'm loud. Please, <laughs> please, don't stop that. I understand you. <laughs> no, it's great. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Old business. Approve, revise joint rules for appointment. We missed one, right? Approve new hire. No, we struck that. Oh, sorry. I missed, I missed that. Yeah, sorry, Jess. That was a change in the agenda. We started. Okay. okay. Joint rules for appointment. Yeah. Is this so, there's one additional change since the last select board meeting. Uh, Gary Nolan reviewed the package and he wanted to uh, make it clear that on the DRB, historically, the alternates are the ones who step up for the board openings. And that's what Gary had, uh, had me add to the uh, write up as presented in your package tonight. And Todd, I know in the past, is this a good time to ask questions? Sure. In, in, in the past, um, or even now, people who are not residents of our town or village do serve on some of our boards. Yes, so that's, that's, 
That's the second change. The village trustees, since the last time the select board made this, also made changes. The village trustees are trying to, uh, or wanted to, or I guess agreed to, restrict board membership to town residents only, people on the voting checklist. Oh, oh, they have to be a voter checklist too. Correct. Not just residents. Right. Um, how is it that we have people serving on our boards who aren't residents? Is that a state, a state law that no, they can you do don't that? Have to. Yeah, state statute says the majority has to be for planning uh, commissions, as an example. So, on the planning council, uh, I have an Elmore resident and a Wolcott resident of the five members. The other three are town residents. On the DRB, I have a Hyde Park resident. Everyone else is a Morris, uh, Morrisville, Morristown resident. So if we accept this, then those people have to resign or when they're finished with their term, they no, the majority, a majority of the board, the majority. No. Yeah, the majority this, of the board. This doesn't say that, though. But that's what Todd just explained. Yeah. Well, that's now, but to Judy's point, Bob, if you accept this as is, when those people's terms are up, they'll not be eligible to rerun for the board to stay on the boards unless they are a Morrisville a Morristown voter. But we also have a tree warden we just appointed that's not a Morristown resident too. Yeah, but he's an employee. Yeah, these are, this is a jointly appointed boards. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I agree, Judy. That's the way I read it as well. And uh, I frankly, I kind of like this, um, you know, that they should be, they should be residents of the village and town. I've had several people question why we have people from outside the town on, on any of our boards. The, the, the law itself is what Todd's referring to that allows for this to happen is because not every community in Vermont is as fortunate as Morristown. And even Morristown has had historically times when there were vacancies and nobody stepped up to fill them. The smaller municipalities, the Belvedere's and the Waterville's, they don't always have people in town willing to serve on their committees. So the state statute is broad enough to allow for folks in the area, but not necessarily residents of that town. So that's why it was, I, I believe that's why they put that. Does our procedure then supersede the state? We can, can, just tighten, be up, we can tighten up the law, we can't, we can't loosen it. So okay. we can be more restrictive with okay. our rules. We just can't go looser than what the state allows. Okay. Assuming we take action on this language, I would just suggest one change the second um, section written in red, it says only village and town residents. I think that should read only village or, or. Town residents. Yeah. I'll make that change, Thank John. Thank you. Otherwise, uh, I, I like this. Thank you, Todd, or thank you, whoever put this together. You're welcome. Um, I, I mean, I. I agree that it makes sense, like on first blush, that we should only have um, town or village residents serving on our boards. But I also worry about um, I worry about losing people who are really committed and who have um, a deep level of institutional knowledge, or you know, knowledge from their um, from their um, area of expertise. You know, like a background in um, you know, something that, that pertains to whatever they're um, voting on and, and legislate or, you know, deciding over in their, um, in their board, you know, and I worry, I like what I hear a lot from in this whole process was that, it, that um, it is hard to find people and especially qualified people to serve on the board. So, I mean, where like, I certainly agree, like on first flush, it makes sense. Like if, if you're invested in the town and you're, and you're a voter and a resident, that you know that is who ideally should be serving on our boards, but I'm I'm worried about excluding um, excluding people who have like shown a long commitment and who are really valuable on our boards, um, and I'm also worried about excluding people who might be really um, qualified, um, especially if we are having a hard time filling um, board vacancies. So I'm a little like, and I'm a little worried because I feel like the initial intent of rewriting this and i and I, I get that it's a back and forth process but the initial intent was um just to clarify like that we have a list a waiting list for board vacancies 
Um, and I, my original intent for um, bringing this up wasn't necessarily to um, to change something. So, I mean, this is pretty major in my opinion. So, um, so those are my comments. So it makes me concerned about. I, I don't know that I could approve this because the part that I came, the part the part that I brought up, and the part that I wanted to to change um, is really important to me in terms of being um, having a really clear pro process and a really clear pathway towards um, serving on a board. But I, I really, I'm just, I'm worried about the repercussions of, of saying that, um, you know, people from outside of the town can't serve on boards. Yeah, Jess, I think uh, I can add, the trustees did not know this document existed. No, but that's how they feel anyway, though. No, I understand. But I'm saying as far as change goes, this entire process, right. this entire document is a change to the bill of trustees. So yeah. having not knowing that it existed prior, they spent a lot of time looking at it and, and looking at the suggested change. Uh, they were very contemplative about that. I think in my conversation with Penny, uh, they just wanted to ensure that uh, you know, the, the, first of all, there was some confusion on the list. And then the list was going to dictate who was next on the board. They wanted to clarify. For folks who were showing interest. And you know, that when there was a vacancy, they would be contacted so they were aware that they were, you know, to be in the line. Yeah. And I know when uh, you talked about other towns, smaller towns not finding people, for many years, it was like that here. We had we had people that, that weren't from the town because we, we had open positions for a long time. Lately, in the past year or two, we've had all kinds of people that want to get them. He died on us. Yeah, we lost him again. Hey, Jess, to your point, I agree with your point uh, on the whole. The trustees aren't going to appoint any non-town residents, period, going forward anyway. So it's just count them out. Fait accompli. Yeah, I just want to respond to Jess. I, I hear you loud and clear on, on what you said. And certainly losing institutional knowledge is would be of a concern to me. I would argue that LCPC is a place where that institutional knowledge could go on a regional basis. And also I mean, I guess I like this because we heard from people about wanting to get onto these boards. And if we're gonna limit it to village or town residents, then hopefully it's a motivation for some of these people to step up and not wait for, you know, somebody from Elmore or somebody from Wolcott or Hyde Park to, to take the spot. But I, I, I hear what you're saying. And um, currently I know that we, um, I'm pretty clear on this, but I just wanna confirm, are there, um, are there term limits on any of the boards right now? No. Yeah, I hear that a lot too. Like you, I've got a lot of friends that own businesses in this town. They pay more property taxes than 10 people that own houses, but yet they're not allowed to serve on the board because they don't live right here. You know, I can think of a couple of people right off that, that have told me they're frustrated about that. <clears throat> Well, Todd, when, if we get to the, situ the point where we can't fill board positions, we can always go back and revisit this, correct? Correct, Judy. Okay, someone want to make a motion? Make a motion. We accept the changes before us for the rules of procedure for jointly appointed subordinate boards. I don't think it's subordinate, is it? Boards and committees, uh, the changes that are in red. And ex except the uh, only village or town. Oh, correct. Change Sorry. the and or. Change correct. the and or. I'll second. Okay, I have a motion by Judy and a second by Don. Yes, I, I am. Okay. Uh, any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. Jeff? Aye. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to nay, which is insane because I wanted this in the first place, but I'm very, yeah, concerned. I know you did. I'm concerned about the additional language from the trustee. Okay. 
Um, any opposed is nay. Um, motion is passed. Four one. Yeah. Thank you. All. Thanks, Todd. Bye. Okay. Bob, uh, can I break in for a second? Yep. Go um, ahead. I'm unfortunately, I'm going to need to remove myself from the meeting at this point. Um, I just wanted to say something before I shut myself down. So. Thank you for joining us, Don. No. You're you're welcome, and uh, yeah, thank you for. Are you, are you going to go and do something fun, Don? Yes. Well, I wasn't going to blame it on her, but my wife is changing in the background right now, so we have to. We're we're leaving. We're going out. We're don't tell out. us about it. We don't know. We're still here. <laughs> and we're going to enjoy the snow tomorrow too. Thanks for joining us. You're very welcome. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Good night. All right, next, discuss assumption of control of roadway with Copley Hospital. So this is a topic that came up last summer. There was much discussion of it. Much discussion uh, on, in several of the meetings about the taking of the roadway down to Copley Terrace. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the question that I put forth to you was whether or not uh, you would consider the road of a, uh, a length that fit the road policy, which 1,000 feet is the minimum road length that it would need to be. That takes uh, the road straight down into the parking spaces of the parking lot. The distance from Washington Highway to where the road, where the uh, driveways, I'll call them, branch off, one goes straight and one to the left, is a distance of 800 and something in an 80 feet, I think the distance was. And in light of all the discussions, Stormwater, stormwater permits. I would suggest at this point that you just uh, determine that the distance is not long enough. The 1,000 foot mark takes you down into the parking spaces. It's not uh, really, it, it would be a stretch to add that. Um, if you were to choose to do that, but I would suggest that you just. The end of the 800 foot mark there. Um, and the other two sections of road are driveways servicing parking areas for the terrace and decline to uh, add that or, or just to decline that the uh that the roadway fits the definition of the road models you have a motion i would like to have a motion for it i'll tell you why I, i've been getting the, the questions no pressure but just the, the repeated question from uh, Copley. the hospital yeah. on this, they like a definitive answer. They asked me as well. So yeah. Shall I make a motion that we do that language? It's true, it's not a lot of that, but I think that is. Okay, so that the motion has to be written and it's spoken in the positive. So my suggestion would be that the motion would be that we accept the road and then that if the board doesn't want to do that, then the board would vote it down. We'd vote it down because yeah. it doesn't qualify. So that's to make a motion to yes to accept the road. Accept the road. Any hundred feet. Yeah. Se second. Is there a second? Okay. Is there any further discussion on this? Does this does that mean that sometimes people park down there in the winter because they snowshoe or cross country ski on the golf course? Would they be prohibited then from parking there? That's up to Copley Hospital. Yeah. Well, they could they could then put a private only and yeah. If they chose to do that's so. up to okay. them. Yeah. All right. I think probably going to change the procedures that they've done using right along. Or just right. Okay. So, any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. Any opposed? Nay. Nay. Jess. Nay. Motion failed. Four zero. Okay. Make motion oh, to approve town warrants. Oh, yeah, it's very good. I have a motion by Judy. Do I have a second by Brian? Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Warrants are passed 4 0. Town Administrator's Report. Uh, met with Ben Smith, Joy Marshall, Gloria Wing, uh, along with Bernie Shelter. Uh, Johnson Bernie served as the uh, groundskeeper for the Wellby Cemetery. And Johnson, for many, many years, we are, we are still working to get a defined sexist job description 
as it would fit the town of Morristown. What we've come to decide is that no two municipalities uh, run their cemeteries the same. The same way, yeah. So uh, we are very close to having that definition done and hiring or advertising employees. Uh, we've been conducting multiple interviews the uh, police department. We've been uh, interviewed uh, several people for the administrative assistant position that's still in process. Uh, we are about to start the interviews for the uh, recreation coordinator's position and probably next week. Uh, so it's not going to Paving bids are in. Kevin and I have not yet sat down to discuss those, but they will be on your agenda for May 2nd. And Judy and I met with LCPC to discuss our town plan language that they have passed along uh, their board members' concerns on. Um, and more to follow on that during the May 2nd public hearing for the town plan. Okay. All right. Is that it? Any questions for Eric? Thanks, Eric. Select board concerns. Jess. Um, I just wanted to reiterate uh, what Don had started, um, what he had touched on a little bit when we were discussing the declaration of inclusion. And again, um, thank the, um, the, the town of Morrisville, um, or the town of Morristown um, in, um, in responding to the um, the death in our town recently, um, the um, and and I'm also very thankful that we were able to pass the declaration of inclusion um, tonight. Um, also, in light of that, um, and other than that, um, I really I really appreciate um, um, Tina's um, clarity tonight in um, explaining the ARPA um, the ARPA. Um, choice that we had and um, also piping in around the um, the tax assessment um, the tax assessment um, district um, and I, I always learn something new so I appreciate it okay Jess Judy thank you, Eric for meeting with inviting me to go along to the LCPC meeting and I, I just so appreciate Eric I mean everybody does such a great job here but this is your <clears> first time being in a, in a position you're in and I just appreciate your uh, your patience and your sense of humor. Thanks. Ryan. Thank you. Thank, thank you, guys. All right. Um, any other business? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. Motion by Judy, second by Brian. <laughs> any further discussion? So I guess I'm sign. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Yes. <laughs> so it is. We are now adjourned. Yes.